Row echelon form of a matrix. This is this is tough stuff potentially. Yeah. So we basically, when we're dealing with matrices, we can use them to solve systems of equations. Right. And the more variables you have, the easier it is to do it this way versus right. elimination or substitution. You got X and Y only. Elimination substitution is not too bad. That's the way to go. You get X Y Z or W X Y Z, and it gets very challenging. Right. And so um, there's two. There's there's this row echelon form is just where you have in your diagonal ones and underneath your diagonal you have zeros right and so as long as that is the case that each row the first non-zero non-zero number is a one right and then everything underneath that in the column has to be zero right now there's also a thing called uh, reduced row echelon form which is this right here which takes it a step right. farther which is even you, more work right um, not as much as you might think, though. Not as much, but... But the that also puts zeros up here. And what happens is if you think about changing this to a system of equations, this is saying x equals 2, y equals 3, z equals negative 7. So if we get to reduced row echelon form, we We're have game the on. answer. Yeah, we got the answer. With regular row echelon form, you still have to do a little work. Because this is saying z equals negative 2. Now we work back up. Right, because this is y plus 4z equals 5. So you plug in and then plug in again. Right. Now, if we put a system of equations into an augmented matrix, these right here it are the things we're allowed to do, the row operations. This is, is basically your algebra. It's, it's basically your algebra rules, but they apply to the matrices. Right. So okay. we are allowed to interchange any two rows. So if like row one and row two, if you'd rather they be the other way around, you Not can a problem. do that. Yeah, totally legal. Um, Number two, you can multiply all elements of a row by a non-zero real number. You, you can't use zero because zero times anything is zero, zero and zero. That's, that's not helpful. Yeah, it doesn't to make do a whole row zero. And then the third step is you can add a multiple of one row to any other row, and that's where it gets a little tri tricky sometimes. Right. But that's exactly how elimination works. If you think about it, you're adding. Yes. A yeah. multiple of another row to some other row. Right. So now this can potentially take up some room. So you want right. to write small. I don't remember how much room we gave you guys on this. We just start off by writing this as an augmented matrix. So step one, don't mess up step one. Right. If you and and actually, whenever you're like I got stuck and don't know where to go, the first thing you should do is make sure you wrote it down right. Right. Otherwise, you're going to be hunting for and a mistake. And if you don't get the correct answer when you do this at the end, oftentimes it's almost easier to just start over than to go through and right. find the mistakes. Not every time, but a lot of the time. So just be prepared to do some erasing. Right. Now, first off, like, pay attention as we go through this. This is the legit easiest way to look at this. And I have done this so many times that, um, like, I'm an expert at this. I, and I don't doubt that. Like, because I've taken classes where, like, you do this stuff all the all time. All the time, yeah. Um, so, I've seen what you do, and she is not lying. So, trust me, if I tell you you can or can't do something, like, I know what I'm talking about. On a about. matrix, for sure. So, the first thing I see here, because we're trying to get row echelon, so we're Which trying to get top this, one. Right. but probably different numbers up right. here. Right, different numbers. We start here mm -hmm. and work our way down. That's a brilliant plan. So we want to get this one, and if you look, since we're allowed to switch rows around, we might as well switch the first Might as two well. Rows. Look, it's already a one, so let's just go ahead and do that. You typically, when you do this, you note what you're doing. So that not to the we side. know what you're doing. And so this is the notation for switch row one and row two, which hopefully that notation makes some sense. So this will be one, two, negative three, twelve. And all we're doing is we're following step one under elementary row operations on the matrix. We're following step one in that bottom green box. Right. So row three didn't have anything. No, nothing changed. happened, so it stays the same. All right. Now, to get a, we got a one. Now we're trying to get the zeros underneath. And what you want to do is you want to use row one because it's got a one. Right. To get those zeros because. What could we add to 3 to get it to be a 0? A negative 3. Right. So what we're going to do is negative 3 times row 1, and we're going to add it to row 2. And the way this notation works is that only the second row is changed by this. Okay. Start off with, we're going to do negative 3 times the, the first, first row, row, add it to the second row. Right. So the only row that's going to actually change is row 2. 
So you can go ahead and write what row one is. And you can go ahead and write what row three is because we're not messing with that guy either. Right. All we're changing is row two. <clears throat> so what we want to do is think about if I multiplied each of these elements in row one by negative three, what would I get? So I'd get negative, negative three, three, negative six, nine, and negative 36. Don't forget those guys on the other side of the augmented matrix. You'll, right. you'll forget about them. And that's one of the easiest mistakes to, to make. Right. So. Now we're going to add these to row two. So negative three plus three is zero. Yes. Negative six plus seven is one. Right. Nine plus negative 11 is negative two. Right. Uh, negative 36 plus 44 is eight. Excellent. Okay, now we've got that zero. Now we want to get the zero underneath it. And these two steps you could combine if you wanted to. I'm right. just doing it separately because, you know, we're walking through this. Right. So let me come down here. If we want this four to be a zero, now we're going to times by negative four right. times row right. one. So and negative for this, four row one. This first column plus that we're getting, row three. we're just going to keep using row one to do our, our work. And this time, row two doesn't change because we're not messing with it. So we can actually copy down row one and row two. So let's see. Um, we're multiplying, and this will be negative four. Negative eight. eight. Positive 12. Negative 48. And then adding it to row three. So right. that's zero. Right. Negative 8 plus 9 is 1. Right. 12 plus negative 13 is negative 1. Yes. Negative 48 plus 53 is 5. Right. Okay, so we're done with the first column. Now everything we do from here on out is structured so that we don't mess up the first column. That's right. First column's, uh, he's, he's, he's finite. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so. The, the next goal is to get the 1 in the middle. Yes. And this is for regular or reduced row echelon form. We need you to get the one. 1 first. And actually, we already have it. Yeah. So we That's don't have convenient. to do anything. So we're going to go and get the zero at the bottom. So to get that zero uh, down well, here. You just subtract. All we, we have to do is subtract. We would subtract R2 and R3. So we're changing R3. So we're actually doing negative one row two plus row three. Okay. And it matters that we think about it that way because you are liable to mess up if you don't. If, yeah, that's correct. We're changing row three. So we times this row by a negative so that we can add. So row one stays the same. Row two stays the same. So the only row that's actually going to change with this one is the third row. So you can go ahead and fill in the first two guys. Okay. And now, uh, and, and we're going to, we should keep a zero there, by the way. Right. This will be zero. This would be negative one. That would be two, two and negative, negative eight. eight. Yep. And add them to the bottom. So, so zero, zero, right, one, right, negative three. There you go. And so then our last step normally for row echelon form would be to get this one, but it's already but there. But we already have it. So we rewrite this as a system. And once you rewrite it as a system, it'll be a lot easier, I think, to it's see. It's a what much you need easier to system. Yeah to solve them it's, what we it's started totally, with. It's totally, totally easy because now we know what one of the variables is. And so now how we worked down just to, through all these steps, now we work back up through all these steps. We know what Z is to start. So we go to the next place where we can plug that negative three in for Z and only have one variable left. So I'm just doing normal solving stuff here. Z, Y, now I plug it into the first one and get X, so X plus two times 2 minus 3 times negative 3 equals 12. 12. And that's x equals 4 plus 9. Right. Which is, oh, I oh, didn't x mean plus equals. x plus 4. 4. <laughs> 4 plus 9 is 13. x plus 13 equals, equals 12. 12. So x equals negative 1. So our solution then negative is where one, all of these things two. go together at a specific point. x, y, z. Alphabetical order. Got it. All right.